So in the last video, you saw what are rational numbers. And then we also did some questions where we have to find out numbers between two rational numbers and so on. Today's video is about irrational numbers. That is the second exercise. So the introduction is basically what are irrational numbers, which I had discussed in brief in my last video. Irrational numbers are numbers which are non-terminating. They are non-terminating and non-repeating. That means they are going to repeatedly go on. I mean, in the sense that if I have a number like uh, root 3 and I'm going to solve this, then what is going to happen is that the numbers will go on. There will be no end to it. These numbers are called non-terminating numbers. I'm going to put three dashes here indicating that this number is not ending, right? So this is a non-terminating. And you find that the numbers are not repeating. Unlike rational numbers where the non-terminating numbers were repeating, here the numbers will go on and it will never repeat. So these type of numbers are called irrational numbers. So who discovered these irrational numbers? So as far as we believe, there was a secret society or a sect called the Pythagoreans. Now you heard about Pythagoras. You heard about Pythagoras, right? Now the followers of Pythagoras were known as the Pythagoreans. So here in this chapter, in this section, the Pythagoreans was contributed. They contributed to this irrational numbers. It was supposed to be a secret and uh, nobody could disclose this information to outsiders. But there was one member of this secret society called Hippacus. Okay, Hippacus of Croton. He leaked out this information about the irrational numbers. And unfortunately, he had to die for that. So the punishment was obviously, since it was a secret society, uh, the people who are disclosing information had to die. But since he gave out information, uh, we all come to know now that irrational numbers exist and we are doing questions based on irrational numbers. So this happened some 2400 years back because this is approximately 400 BC. So 400 BC means approximately we are considering some 2400 years back. So we come to the next part of this chapter, that is what are irrational numbers. So in the by definition, irrational numbers are numbers which are non-terminating and non-repeating. Some classic examples are root 2, root 3, root 15. Pi is the most famous example of an irrational number. Then you have series like this. See, it is not 0 0.101010. This would have been a repeating number. I could have been rational, but here it is 10. Double one zero, triple one zero, four ones and zero, and then they are putting these three dashes indicating this process repeats. It is not one zero one zero. The process is not repeated. So these are non-repeating numbers, but at the same time they are not ending. Also, so such type of numbers where roots of numbers which are not perfect roots, the perfect squares, and also here if you see this is pi. Uh, which will go on and on. There is no end to pi. We know that even if you calculate the value of pi up to millions of places of decimal, it's not going to end. So such type of numbers are called irrational numbers, right? So going further, we come to <clears throat> number lines. So here we've already said that real numbers are of two types. So if it is number is real, it can either be a rational number or it can be irrational, right? So very important thing to understand is that real numbers can be either rational or irrational. So all rational numbers are real, all irrational numbers are real, but all real numbers may or may not be rational. All real numbers may or may not be irrational because real means it can be rational or irrational. Now, if you look at the number line, 0, 1, 2, 3. In my last video, I had explained what is number line. So you have 0 at the center, you have positive numbers on the right, and you have negative numbers on the left. So every real number is represented by a unique point on the number line. So these numbers 1, 2, 3, 4 are all natural numbers. 0 is a whole number. These are integers. Okay. We haven't represented any irrational number as of now. 
So in this exercise, what we are going to do is basically how to find out the value of an irrational number on a number line. Because value of rational numbers, we have already done that we can easily find out where is 1.1 or 1.2, where is 2, 2.5, etc. Or where is 1 by 2, etc. by dividing 1 by 2, 0.5. So we know that 1 by 2 is here. So this is all rational numbers. So two German mathematicians by the name of Cantor and Dedekind. Okay. Two German mathematicians by the name of Cantor. This is R. G. Cantor and this is R. Dedekind. They gave some very important information. They said that corresponding to every real number, there is a point on the real number line and corresponding to every point on the number line, there exists a unique real number. So if you are taking a real number, okay, corresponding to every real number, whatever real number you take, then there has to be a point on the number line. So it's not only about natural numbers or whole numbers or integers. Any real numbers, that means we are talking about also irrational numbers. So how do we show irrational numbers on the number line? So the first example here, example number three, very important is how to locate root two on the number line. Now, first thing that we have to understand is root two is to be split into two numbers. The sum of whose squares is two. So two can be written as one square plus one square. Okay, we need to see the number here and split it into two parts and we have to square and add it so that we get it. So root two is one square plus one square. Suppose you have root five, I have to root, write it as two square plus one square or one square plus two square. Suppose I have root 17, can you tell me what will be root 17? Root 17 will be four square plus one square. So the first thing that you have to understand is that this number has to be split into two numbers. The sum of whose squares will give you this, right? So if I'm having, let's say a number 13, root 13, I can write this as three square plus two square because three square is nine and two square is four, nine plus four is 13. So this is the first thing that we have to understand. So let's take it one at a time. So right now I'm concentrating on root two, which I'm going to write as one square plus one square. So which means I need to make a triangle with base one and height one. Now, if I'm going to make a right angle triangle with base one and height one, then by Pythagoras theorem, I know this is root two because one square plus one square is hypotenuse square. Okay, if you remember the Pythagoras, the base square plus perpendicular square is hypotenuse square. So one plus one is hypotenuse square. Two is hypotenuse square. So hypotenuse is root two. So this is how I calculate the value of the hypotenuse. So that is the technique they have used. They have drawn this number line zero, one, two, three here. And it's extending on both directions. Here we have zero. Here we have negative numbers. I'm going to take positive one here. So this is my positive one. And I'm going to construct 90 degrees here. This has to be 90. Exact 90. Okay. Not uh, obtuse or acute angle. This has to be a 90 degree line, which you can use a compass to construct this 90. Or you can use a protractor to construct this 90. And then what is going to happen? The base is one. Okay, this is one centimeter or one inch that depends on you, but it has to be one unit. It has to be equal spacing, not that you're making a number line like the zero, one and two. No, this space and this space has to be equal. Either you take everywhere one centimeter or you take everywhere one inch. Then I'm going to take one as the base. So this is one. Suppose let's say I'm taking one inch. I will take one inch also as the perpendicular. This has to be 90 the hypotenuse here will become root 2. This is my root 2. Now I'm going to keep the compass here, extend the compass point till B, and I'm going to draw this arc. Wherever it intersects the number line, this point is going to give me root 2, right? So this is my number line, 0, 1, 2. At 1, this is the base, 1. I'm going to construct 90 degrees here. I'm going to cut 1 inch or 1 centimeter. If this is 1 centimeter, this is also 1 centimeter. This is 1 inch, this is also 1 inch. This has to be same. Base and perpendicular has to be 1 unit. Join this. Let's name this as B. Keep the compass at O, extend it to B and bring it down. The point where it intersects the number line is going to give you the value of root 2. Right? So this is how we do root 2. So this is an important question. It can come in the exam. Locate root 2 on the number line. Next is how to locate root 3 on the number line. Now root 2, 2 is 1 square plus 1 square. Root 3 cannot be drawn directly with natural numbers. Like when we did root 2, we said it is 1 square plus 1 square. 
But root 3 is actually a combination of root 2 square plus 1 square. That means root 2 square is what? When you square a root, the root goes away, you get 2. And 1 square is 1, so you're getting 3. So root 2 square plus 1 square. So I need to make root 2 to make root 3. I cannot make root 3 directly. First, I need to make root 3. So what am I going to do? Whatever procedure I told you about root 2, that has to be repeated, which means I'm going to draw one unit here. I'm going to draw one unit here. I'm going to join this. This is going to give me my root 2. Now to make root 3, again, I'm going to repeat the procedure. This is already root 2 now. From here, again, I'm going to take one unit. Again, 90 degrees, okay? This has to be 90 degrees with the protector or compass. And you're going to take one unit here also. When I take a combination of root 2 as the base and 1 as the perpendicular, the hypotenuse that you get is going to be root 3. So this is root 2, this is 1. The hypotenuse that you get will be root 3, right? So this is our value of root 3. Now keep the compass here. Open out the compass to D and you're going to bring it down here. Wherever it intersects here, this value is going to give you root 3, right? So again, I'm repeating 0, 1, 2. First, I have to make one unit on one. I'm going to join this. So one and one will give me root two. And if I want a root three, then again, from here, I have to draw 90 degrees, one unit. Okay, don't draw a longer line or smaller line. It has to be one unit. Join this. Then this length is root three. Now this compass you will keep at O. Take the radius as OB and you are going to bring it down here. So this value where it intersects is going to give you root 3. So this is how we plot a rational number. So any rational number can be done by this process. Right. So moving further, we go to the exercise. The first question says, state whether the following statements are true or false, justify your answer. Every irrational number is real. This is going to be a true statement because just now I told you, if I'm talking about real numbers, it can either be a rational number or it can be an irrational number, right? We can have real as So here, every irrational is real, is true. Every rational number is real, is true. So every rational number is real. Every irrational number is real is a true statement. Every point on the number line is in the form of root m, where m is a natural number. Now, if I'm taking a number line, they're saying that every point on the number line is in the form of root m, where m is a natural number. So if m is a natural number, if I want to plot zero, then I will not get because m is a natural number means I'm starting from one because natural numbers start from one to infinity. So all these numbers you will get, but what about zero? root 0 is 0, but I can't take the value of m as 0, right? So I will not be able to get this value. So every point on the number line is in the form of root m. Is This is a false statement. This is a false statement because we cannot get many other numbers. We will be able to get only these values here. We cannot get 0. We cannot get many other numbers. Every real number is irrational. Every real number is irrational. Is it true or false? It is false because Every real number can be rational or irrational. They are saying that every real number has to be rational. It cannot be compulsory like that. The opposite is true. Every irrational is real, but every real is not irrational because real numbers can be rational or irrational. So every real number is irrational is a false statement. Okay. So we have done question number one, all the three parts. We go to the second question. Are the square root of all positive integers irrational are the square root of all positive integers. Now, let's see if I take root one, that is one. It's a perfect number. It's a natural number. All natural numbers are rational. So this is going to be a rational number. Root two, the value is going to be non-terminating and non-repeating. So this is an irrational number. Root three is an irrational number. If I take root four, the value of root four, you know, is two. So this is going to be rational because the value exists. This is a terminating number. Root 5, irrational. Root 6, irrational. Root 7, irrational. Root 8, irrational. Root 9 is going to be 3, which is a rational number. Root 10 is going to be irrational. So what is the conclusion? The question is, are the square root of all positive integers irrational? No. 
If not, give example. So this is what I have shown. You have to give the example of, let's say from 1 to 10, some numbers are rational, some numbers are irrational. So are the square root of all positive integers irrational? No. Some numbers are rational. See here, rational, 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 and some numbers are irrational. Next question. Show how root 5 can be represented on the number line. How root 5 can be represented on the number line. So if I'm having root 5, I told you, you need to convert this into the sum of squares of two numbers. So root 5, which two numbers on squaring will give me root 5? So root 5 is a combination of 2 square plus 1 square. Root 5 is a combination of 2 square and 1 square or 1 square and 2 square. That's up to you. So I'm going to make the number line here positive on the right, negative on the left. The first number that you see here is 2. So I'm going to take this portion from 0 to 2. In root 2 and root 3, we had taken 1 each. Here I'm going to take 2. So what am I going to do? I'm going to construct here 90 degrees. I'm extending this. I'm going to cut one unit. Now remember here, the base of this triangle should be 2 and the height should only be 1. The base is 2 units. So as I told you, this can be 2 inches or 2 centimeters. And the base is 2. This is 2. And the height is only 1 unit. You cannot take any length here. It has to be 1 unit. And you're going to join this. So when I join this, now this is 2 and this is 1 unit. Okay. This is only 1 unit. So this is going to be double of this. So when I take a combination of 2 and 1, keep the compass here. And when I take the compass, extend it to A. And when I draw this arc, it's going to intersect somewhere between 2 and 3. That point is going to give us root 5. So this is our root 5. Then we come to the classroom activity, that is construction of square root spiral. Now, this is also part of the practicals. So, you know that in class 9 and 10, there is also maths practicals. So, square root spiral is the first activity or the practical that we do in math. So, this can be done in the practical period also, how to construct square root spiral. Now, square root spiral comes out to be a very beautiful diagram. I will be showing you some examples of square root spirals which uh, are there. So the procedure is very simple. You have to start by drawing a right angle triangle with base 1 and height 1. So I'm going to draw root 2 first. So I'm taking 1 here and 1 here. When I join this, I'm going to get root 2. right? And remember, this is 90 degrees. Then I'm going to take again 90 degrees here. And I'm going to take 1 unit here. When I join this, 1 and 1 is root 2. Root 2 and 1 unit here, this is going to give me root 3. Then again, I'm going to take 90 degrees from here. I'm going to take one unit here. The combination of root 3 and 1 will give me root 4. Then again, I'm going to construct 90 degree here, root 4 and 1. When I join here, I'll get root 5. Again, I'm going to construct 90 degrees here. And I'm going to take one unit, always one unit as the perpendicular. This is going to be root 6. Again, 90 degrees here. Every point has to be 90 degrees. This is also very important. 90 degrees is important and one unit is important. You are going to get root 7. Again, construct 90 degrees here and take one unit here. So this is going to come root 8. You are going to repeat this process. 90 again and one unit here. You are going to get root 9. 90 again, one unit here. This is going to come root 10. 90 degrees again and one unit here. This all has to be one unit. Don't take it smaller or less. Then you will get inaccurate root 11. Again, take 90 and then take 1. I'm going to get root 12. So you are going to do till no more can be drawn. So this is called the square root spiral. Now I'm going to, uh, uh, normally what happens is that this integrated, this can be, the square root spiral can be integrated with arc uh, as per the circular of Ek Bharat Shresh Bharat where every state has to uh, do one art integration project in which we have to do the art of the spared state. So I'm going to show you some examples of how this can be done. Uh, you can just see the examples of square root spiral. So what you need to do is just, you can Google search and uh, you will get lots of examples of students who have uploaded the square root spiral. So just compare square root spiral, just make a Google search, go to the images, and you will find beautiful square root spirals. So here you find simple square root spiral, right? This is not art integrated, but if you look at 
this one it's art integration okay so suppose you are a student from delhi you can integrate sikkim art on this so the square root spiral can be beautifully designed like this so as you see here there are many many beautiful designs so you can use your creativity here and you can integrate the square root spiral with art so just see here the square root spiral this is another example of square root spiral here so you are going to get many many designs like this so all this you will be able to find when you just do the search so first procedure is obviously you are going to draw the square root spiral as it is and once you draw the square root spiral you will be able to use the design and then you are going to uh, integrate the art form of your paired state so you will get very beautiful examples on the net you can see how it is there or you can also see uh, how students have made or you can also use your own creativity and make uh, something like this so this is the second exercise i'm sure you will do this exercise and also you will be able to enjoy this activity thank you